那么从这节课开始，我就基本上全用英文授课，所以从现在开始呢，我就再不说汉语了。Let me talk a little bit about some of the other classes. So, in the first class, we looked at the story of Bo Ya and Zhong Ziqi, and we looked at it through recitation. I read the English version of the story in this book. I read it from beginning to end, and then I gave a few suggestions and tips about how. To recite, how to make your voice more exciting, more vivid, more lively. How to convey the emotions of the story with your voice. But in this class, we have a slightly different purpose. What we are focused on in this class is not how you read the story, but the content of the story. We want to make sure that you are able to convey the information and the storyline. To other people, and the way we're going to do that is by practicing summarizing. Summarizing means making something shorter, or to use some other English words, it means making something more concise and more succinct. We could also use the verb condense. It's about condensing a story so that you can express it in just a few sentences with a few words, and so the whole story can be told in just a few seconds. The reason we want to do that is because, at the end of the day, we hope that everyone who's reading this book, listening to this series, will learn how to take Chinese culture out into the world. We hope that with your foreign friends, with your foreign teacher, you can express these Chinese stories, talk about these Chinese stories. Now, if you don't have your book with you, you won't be able to just open the book and read the story. And you're unlikely to be able to memorize every story in this book. And even if you did memorize the story of Bo Ya and Zhong Ziqi, to recite the whole English text in this book would take you many, many minutes. But in the middle of a conversation, in the midst of a conversation, you want to be able to talk as briefly and succinctly as you can. You want to get the information across so your listener understands and the conversation can continue. So that's why we're learning how to summarize the story. But I should say, incidentally, that summarizing is a really, really valuable skill, whether in English or in Chinese or any language, because what summarizing is about is deciding what information is important and what information is less important, and it's also about deciding in what order information should come. Often, when people tell stories to other people, they make the mistake of thinking that. Uh, they can go straight to the interesting part of the story or the exciting part of the story, and when they do that, the listener will often not understand because they won't know all of the background information, all of the things that they need to know in order to understand the story. So when we summarize stories, it's really, really important. Even if the summary is very short, we still have to give a little bit of background, give a little bit of information, so that the listener can. Understand roughly where the story is coming from, what time this story happened, where it happened, who it's about, and so on. Now, before I dive into this summary, what I'm going to do first is just take you through a couple of words, a few words that、uh, are going to appear in this story. The first of those words is zither. Now. Zither actually has many meanings.、Uh, zither is a type of instrument that is found、uh, in the Middle East. Actually, that's its original meaning. But we also use the word zither to translate the Chinese instrument, the gu qin.、Uh, so that's the word zither. But it's not a common word.、Uh, we don't see it very often、uh, in, in, in other English texts. Another word I thought I'd just、uh, mention here is the word appreciate, which means, of course, xinxiang,、uh, because this story is all about the ability to appreciate music, not just the ability to play music. Boya is a master at playing music, but what this story is also showing us is that people who can really listen to music, who can really appreciate music, can really be moved, 感动 by music, are also few, and. What ultimately this story is about is not so much about Boya and his ability to play, but it's about the meeting of a musician and an appreciative audience, an appreciative listener, who was、uh, Zhong Ziqi.、Uh, 
Uh, there's a phrase I thought I would also introduce, which is going to come into the summary, which is firm friends. That just means a very, very close friend, but it's a particular phrase that you'll often see used, both in oral English and in written English. They were firm friends. That means they were really, really good friends. And the word inspire, uh, in the context of this story, means huoda lingang, huoda dodao qifa. You might remember from the story as I read it uh, yesterday that Boya, when he saw the full moon, he suddenly was inspired to play uh, on his gu qin. So, ta kan dao man yue, jiu de dao le huo de le ling gan. Okay, and then the uh, next phrase I'd like to introduce, which will be coming into this uh, summary, is to be full of praise. To be full of praise means that you praise someone very, very highly. Praise, of course, means kua uh, jiang or biao yang. But if you are full of praise for something or for someone, it means that you biao yang, you praise that person so much, more than most other people. Okay. Now, uh, we're almost ready to dive into the story. So as I mentioned before, at the beginning of the story, it's important to set up uh, the story with some background information. And one of the things that uh, is pretty important with background information to est- is to establish the who, the when, and the where. The who, of course, is main character. When is when did it happen, and where is where did it happen. Uh, so let's just look at the first half of the sentence. I'm not going to read the whole sentence. I'm just going to read the first half of the sentence, or the first part of the sentence. Boya was a scholar in the kingdom of Chu. Now, Chu uh, was a kingdom during the uh, Chunxiu period, the spring and autumn period of China, and the Jiangguo period. Uh, so that automatically tells us that we're dealing with very, very ancient Chinese history, more than probably 2,500 years. But it also uh, places us as well, because when you talk about the kingdom of Chu, you are obviously talking about China. Okay, so now let's look at the second part of the sentence. So in the first part of the sentence, we were introduced to the where, the when, and the who, the main character, Boya, was mentioned, plus the where and the when. And now we come to the second part of the sentence, which reads, who was extraordinarily fond of the ziver and was especially noted for his mastery of the ziver. So this then gives us more background information. This is probably more or less the sum of the background information that we need. We now know not only that it's about a person called Boya, but we know what kind of a person Boya is. We know that he is a type of artist. Now, let's look at the whole sentence. We'll put it all together. Boya was a scholar in the kingdom of Chu who was extraordinarily fond of the ziver and was especially noted for his mastery of the ziver. Okay, let's go on now to the second sentence. He was able to capture the wild beauties of nature. So this is now setting up the other element of the story. We need to know that he's really good at playing the zither, but we also need to understand that he's someone who is able to uh, use his musical talent to somehow express the uh, beauties of nature, so that this story has the element of music plus the element of nature. Uh, So with those first two sentences, just two sentences, we've now established a pretty solid foundation and background for this story. We know when, where, we know who, And we know that he's a musician, and we know that he's a musician who derives his inspiration from nature. Okay, let's move on now to the next sentence. However, he had a problem, which was that he was always lonely because he couldn't find anyone who could appreciate the music he played. So I often say in this section that that problems are an important part of a story. The classic story nearly always has a problem. And early on, or or maybe midway through the story, the problem emerges, and then the rest of the story becomes the 
solution to that problem. So in this way, uh, in this summary, we have now in the third sentence stated the problem, and that then gets us into story mode. We now know, okay, there's a problem, there's a question mark here, and there's something that needs to be solved. Okay, let's move on to the next sentence. One night, the light of a full moon after a tempest inspired Boya to play his zither. Now, you'll notice at the beginning of that sentence, I used the word or the phrase one night. One night's a little bit like once upon a time or one day. Yo, uh, go As soon as you hear that, one night, one day, uh, you know that you're beginning to tell the events of the story. So that's a, like a signal to your listener. Ah, now the actual events of the story are going to begin. What came before was background, but now... We're going to talk about the thing, whatever it is, that happened that this story is all about. And as soon as he finished playing the first tune, a woodcutter called Zhong Ziqi appeared and was full of praise for Boya's playing. The two men became firm friends. Later, they agreed to meet at the same place the following mid-autumn day. However, a year later, Boya found, to his great distress, that his friend had died. Immediately, he cut the strings of his zither and smashed it. He didn't think he would ever have anyone else to play for. And so, in those final couple of sentences, two or three sentences, we've now uh, expressed the meat of the story, the main part of the story, which is that these two men met. Uh, Zhong Ziqi showed great appreciation for Boya's playing. They agreed then to meet again, but Boya found that his firm friend, his soulmate, you might say, had died. And at that moment, he felt that his music no longer had a listener. Without a listener, his music, he felt, was not of any value. To anyone, so he smashed his zither. Okay, we're now going to read the whole of that summary again, and you'll see that it only takes me a few seconds to read it. Boya was a scholar in the kingdom of Chu who was extraordinarily fond of the zither and was especially noted for his mastery of the zither. He was able to capture the wild beauties of nature. However, he had a problem, which was that he was always lonely because he couldn't find anyone who could appreciate the music he played. One night, the light of a full moon after a tempest inspired Boya to play his zither. As soon as he finished playing the first tune, a woodcutter called Zhong Ziqi appeared and was full of praise for Boya's playing. The two men became firm friends. Later, they agreed to meet at the same place the following mid-autumn day. However, a year later, Boya found to his great distress that his friend had died. Immediately, he cut the strings of his zither and smashed it. He didn't think he would ever have anyone else to play for. OK, well, that's almost it for this lesson, and I suggest that you memorise that summary, because that is something you can take with you for the rest of your life. And whenever you have friends, foreign friends particularly, who want to know a little bit more about the Chinese aesthetic sense, about Chinese music, this will be a nice story to add to your conversation. But before I go, I'm going to leave you with one question which my colleague is going to deal with in the next lesson. What did Boya sense when he played the zither? Okay, that's it from me. Bye for now.